suggests it was simply Nefertari's bad luck, but the site uh, chosen for her tomb was a poor quality limestone spot that seemed laden with salt. Attention was given to her appearance, her eyes, her eyebrows that were outlined in black and also the red color that was present on her cheeks and lips, while the most exquisite gold and jewelry set was adorning her. She's Nefertari, the queen, the loveliest of all. Here in Cairo, time to have a quick look at the major top stories of the hour. President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi held a meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli and Minister of Electricity and Renewable Energy Mohamed Shaker. During the meeting, the President directed the continuation of upgrading electricity sector based on successes achieved in this regard during the past years. President Sisi was also briefed on the developments of electrical interconnection projects with neighboring countries including Saudi Arabia, Greece, Cyprus and Italy. The meeting also tackled measures of securing the electricity supply of national projects of land reclamation in Toshka and New Delta as well as Sinai and Upper Egypt. The United States announced sanctions on Sudanese leaders it blames for the breakdown of U.S. and Saudi brokered ceasefire efforts after shelling and airstrikes killed 18 civilians at a Khartoum market. For nearly seven weeks, Khartoum and other parts of Sudan have been gripped by deadly fighting between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces, both of which Washington held responsible for violating the ceasefire and provoking appalling bloodshed. Fighting continued Thursday with witnesses reporting heavy artillery fire in North Khartoum days after the two sides had agreed to extend the ceasefire men to allow essential aid deliveries. Ukrainian forces in Kiev said on Friday they shot down 36 Russian missiles and drones in around capital overnight with two people injured by falling debris before authorities lifted air raid alerts across most of the country. 
Russia has launched about 20 missiles and drone attacks on Kyiv since the beginning of May. A surge in strikes that the government says appears aimed at derailing Ukraine's preparations for a major counteroffensive. An Air Force statement said its air defenses had shot down 15 cruise missiles and 21 drones. It said a wave of drones had been launched late on Thursday, followed by a volley of cruise missiles as people slept at around 300 the local time. South Korea on Friday announced new sanctions against a North Korean hacking group, Kim Suki, it accused of being involved in the North's latest satellite launch attempt. The United States and South Korea also issued a joint advisory saying the group conducts large-scale cyber attacks at think tanks, academic institutions and new outlets. The hackers are known to conduct the spear phishing campaigns posing a real journalist, academics or other individuals with incredible links to North Korean policy circles, Seoul's foreign ministry said. The U.S., South Korea and Japan said any launch by Pyongyang using ballistic missile technology violates multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions. That was a look at the major top stories of the hour. We'll be back on top of the hour with more news and updates. This is the signing off. وانت ماشي في الطريق او قاعد مع صديق وانت بره مصر او جوه مصر وانت في الشغل او في المكتب جوه البيت او بره البيت ماسبيرو دوت اي جي معاك في كل مكان بوابه ماسبيرو اعلام مصر بين ايدي Just being a center for major religious civilizations, such as the Coptic civilization and the Islamic civilization, Egypt also holds a long history of ancient spiritual practices and beliefs that are unique to its geographical landscape and natural environment.
always been a hub for various religious sites and activities. Researchers in the UNWHO report have also pointed out that religious and spiritual tourism cannot take place without the contribution of local communities, as cultural values and natural landscapes are usually attached to local communities who protect, preserve, and promote these values and landscapes. Religious and spiritual tourism has also enabled communities to change their awareness of ecosystem and the environment. family's journey in Egypt had great historical and religious significance for Egyptians. It had given the Egyptian Coptic Church a special position among other Christian churches.
The Holy Family traveled in Egypt for around three years and six months. The duration of the Holy Family's journey in the places they visited varied from a few days to few months. family's flight to Egypt is associated with archaeological sites from Sinai to the Delta and Asyut in Upper Egypt. The government has been keen on documenting the Holy Family's period in Egypt with a view to register it on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The revival of the itinerary of the Holy Family in Egypt is believed to contribute a better understanding of Egypt and its people and to the promotion of its beauty and values to the whole world. And of course this project will also encourage tour operators and travel agents to develop cultural tourism programs around the route of the Holy Family for a discovery of the historical and spiritual treasures of Egypt.
sacred site for the world's three major monotheistic religions and includes St. Catherine's Monastery as well as Mount Sinai, where according to the Bible, God spoke to Moses. Transfiguration project includes unique aspects and will completely change the city. The project aims to establish a spiritual shrine above the mountains surrounding the Holy Valley, making it a destination for spiritual, healing and environmental tourism worldwide. aims to provide recreational services for visitors while preserving local nature. Transfiguration will include the establishment of more than 14 projects in the mountains surrounding Wadi Toa in the South Sinai Governorate, with the aim of transforming the region into a major religious tourism hub. Library, which holds the largest collection of ancient religious manuscripts in the world, is also currently being restored. This is happening parallel to the restoration work on churches inside the monastery, such as the churches of St. John and St. Stephen.
project is also set to improve the urban environment of the city by establishing bicycle and pedestrian lanes as well as supporting plants to plant vegetation such as olive trees. So again we are talking about sustainability. Mount St. Catherine is 2,642 meters high, which is the highest point in Sinai. Its journey is hard and requires a certain level of fitness, but the view of Sinai from the highest point deserves the journey. In winter, you can enjoy the snow that forms at the top of the mountain along with the warmth of the awesome sunrise. Sinai is a great experience. It is also known as Mount Moses, which is regarded as a sacred mountain by Muslims, Christians, and Jews, since it is where Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. Climbed by camels while admiring the scenery and enjoying the chilly weather. Tourists frequently start their day journey of this kind at night to witness the dome from a high vantage point. What an amazing excursion! Mm -hmm. 